G'day, mate. Hello, friend. Hi, Greg. Uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's... Uh, uh, hey, 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 how's uh, the weather? Oh, well, listen, it stopped raining today. It's been better. Or oh, raining. Have, not to say rain is bad, but yeah, it's been pretty full on. In this quantity, have you been... Has there been news about it over there? Uh, I just saw like some cars trying to stupidly cross rivers that were like <laughs> Niagara Falls. Were any of them Malus? <laughs> I think one was a Toyota Rev Four. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Not a very uh, kind uh, of Australian, a little bit. Uh, no, it's okay. I mean, it's it's fine where we are. Um, very wet, but there's some parts of the state that are having real trouble right now. Yeah. Um, did you like have any wet weddings? I saw one like wedding that was rained out. Bro, I had I had one on Saturday that was, you know those ones where they're just everything is harder, mm. like everything is harder. You wake up and you're like, I know this is gonna be like a tough one. It's gonna be a tough wedding. Um, and I was, luckily I was at this venue where everything can be inside and it was okay. But mm. um, it was Which one? it's called the Robertson Hotel. It's I really like it. Yeah. I don't think you've been there, hey? No, I don't think so. But uh, it was extremely wet, ceremony inside, photos inside. We went outside for like five minutes and got absolutely drenched. <laughs> um, Were yeah. you like, yeah, yeah, we'll do some like umbrella <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I just knocked something off my desk. Uh, but, yeah, no, what can you do, man? We're professionals, aren't we? We, uh, we mm. soldier on no matter what the weather. That is true. Uh, how, how We've you? had uh, nothing but good weather because you guys literally like the big, huge, big uh, high uh, that is causing all your rain is just sitting over New Zealand. So we've had like two weeks of perfect weather. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So, they said we might get a little bit of the rain you've had this weekend, but it won't be anything. It'll just be a few spits. So when you say you've had perfect weather, you mean like blue skies and 25-ish? Just, yeah, just yeah, lovely. yeah, exactly. Oh man, there you this go. is my. I'm getting into my favorite time of year for weddings oh, now, mate. Hundred oh, percent. What? So why nice. is it your favorite? You know, it's funny. the The light at this time of year, I find, plays tricks on you because mm. at like four o'clock, you think it's six o'clock because it's just getting that little bit lower in the like. You know, the sun doesn't get as high anymore. Mm-hmm. It's lower in the sky, even like at you know midday. Mm. And so yeah, today I was working. I was just doing some painting, and. Um, it was five o'clock and it felt like seven o'clock. Right. Because the sun's just that that bit lower. So no, I love this time of year. It's cool and just this the light's nice. It's beautiful. And of course the colour in the trees. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah, I haven't really seen hasn't really struck me yet the, really? the the trees. Yeah. You got a few sweet like deciduous trees. <laughs> I've just been noticing driving through my, you know, standard spots. I was like, oh bit of red there. Bit of oh. bit of red there. There's- Bit of color. Tell you what else I like about this time of year, Greg. What? What time of the morning do you usually wake up? <sighs> Seven o'clock. Okay, so pretty similar. I'm usually like, for some reason, six forty. I always wake up at six forty. Okay. Uh, and I really like waking up at six forty, and it's dark outside. Mm. Does that? If you find that, or is is uh, New Zealand? Sunrise yeah, we're about there? the same. Like sunrise is about seven ten. Oh, something like that. I love having my first coffee when in the dark. I don't know why. Really? Oh man, I really. Lo- I feel like I feel like nothing has woken up yet, and the world is still kind of um, asleep, and and I'm I'm sort of getting early access to going. the day. Yeah, I'm sipping away at my coffee, and I'm. I've got, I've just got like a special sneak preview of how the day is going to be, and I can see it unfold through my window, or whatever. And wow, I know that's like a bit, maybe I don't know, weird, but I really yeah. like it. Then it's cool. I think I don't. I I think I don't like that. I think if I get up, <laughs> <laughs> like I respect that you like it, but for me, I think that if I'm up before the sun's up, it's kind of like, like it's I shouldn't be. Like I'm too early. Oh, okay, so you're you're. It's like, it's, like it's I should be on my way that, to the airport. Or yeah, something. and you're not. It's an indicator that there's something wrong. <laughs> yeah. I feel you. It's like no, no, no. Go back to sleep. Uh, Close my eyes. I mean, but that's interesting. Each to their Would own. you be inclined to like do any exercise at that like before sunrise? Categorically, 
No. <laughs> yeah. Would you? Ah, uh, when because uh, you know you do all sorts of stupid things through your life, mm-hmm. and uh, at times I would have joined like a stupid gym where a friend of mine's been like, "Oh yeah, we'll work out bef- like before work or something." And you get up at uh, six o'clock, and I'm just like, "No, no, 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 I no, just, no, no, no." I um, I find as I get a little older that I just um, it's sl- much slower to wake up and get going, and I find mm-hmm. that the first hour or so of of waking up, I like I like you know drinking coffee in the dark, or whatever. But there's no way I could coordinate my body to do exercise <laughs> at that time mm. of the day, man. I'm like a mid morning guy. Mm, nice. I'm more of an afternoon <laughs> exerciser. I see it sure. pop up on my watch. It's like Greg just finished a run. Oh, Greg, every just, yeah, it's like I once, never use once it. every two weeks. Oh, you never use your watch? Yeah, exactly. Once every two weeks, yeah. it. mate. That's better than once every three weeks. <laughs> Uh, um, Actually, I've been doing heaps of gym lately. Like, okay, what do you mean? Like, uh, when you say gym, what do you weights. mean? Weights. Oh, Heavy like weights. at home or at a gym? Yeah, at home, at home. Nice. I bought a, a while ago, I bought a huge big um, uh, dumbbell rack. Okay. So it's like f- the lowest is 12.5 kilos. Okay. And the highest is 35 kilos. Do you not ever and, touch um, the 35s? Uh, admittedly. <laughs> That's pretty okay, heavy so, for dumbbells. You know, have you ever done a, a what's it called? Like a, a it's a, a bench press, yeah. but you use dumbbells. Yeah, like a dumbbell press, yeah. A dumbbell press, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, for me, uh, historically, if I can do eight uh, reps, mm-hmm. eight reps, yeah, eight reps uh, of 30 kilos in each hand, I know I'm pretty good. That's a, That's a fair weight. Yeah, I just got to eight. Like the last workout I did, and my my whole thing is that if you can get to eight on one weight, then you should be able to go to the next weight. Like sevens, sevens when you've cracked it, eight you've mastered it. Right. So now I'm gonna go to thirty two point five on the press, <laughs> and then yeah, I've never got to the thirty fives. But I do other things like you can do the. I mean, I don't even know what these things are called. Like it's called like a. Like uh, you put your knee on the bench and and like okay, so your left left knee on the bench, yep, and then your right hand, Gripping no, and then your dumbbell. left hand on the bench, and yep. you lift the dumbbell up to like the, your side. That does your uh, is it called your lat? Your back, yeah, your, your lat. Yep, that's like, like a lat. That's lat pull, pull up, I guess, or something. Something, and uh, you could do the thirty five on those because it's not so intense. Mm-hmm. But um, anyway, so yeah, man. Okay, listen, um, <clears throat> we probably talked about this before. But um, I don't know. You know, we all we all know what the wangover feels like. The mm-hmm. feeling just destroyed the day after a wedding, um, and I reckon partially it's due to uh, hydration or you know not drinking enough water and hydrating enough on the wedding day. But sure. it, I honestly reckon the other factor is fitness, and mm-hmm. and um, it's it's easy to forget the physical toll that being on your feet for nine or ten hours and just a hundred percent driven and constant and involved the whole day can take on you. And Absolutely. I really think that um, doing exercise, weight training and cardio training can really help you get over your wang over like way, way faster. Totes. Are we you in the greens? Uh, yes. Uh, I was at a wedding last weekend and the one of the groomsmen was super late. And so we were doing the first look and he ran the length of the beach. He just arrived and he was like running, running, running. Oh, and wow. they're, giving, they're giving me a hard time. And um, anyway, we did the first look, did some bridal party photos. And then I had like five minutes to take photos of the marquee and then get to the ceremony because I was finishing straight after the ceremony. They only had me for like three hours. And so I ran from the first look to the ser- to the marquee, which was like 200 meters on like white sand. Uh-huh. Oh man, that's not easy to, yeah. And I was just like charging. I was like, Rah, just <laughs> running. And I was just thinking, shh. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. Like I'm, I'm pretty right fit for, at the moment. For an old like, <laughs> for an old yeah, I was. I was like, yeah, things are pretty good at the moment. Pretty oh, fit. man, it's a nice feeling, and <laughs> yeah, that, that can be our um, proactive um, make it snapping. Mm. Like get fit, mofos. Get those thirty-two point five dumbbells, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm reading this book right now. It's called Working Stiff, and Ooh. it's yeah, I know it's not dodgy. Don't worry. Um, it is about it's an autobiography of a New York City, um, I think she's called a medical examiner. Basically, she does autopsies. Mm. And um, a stiff is like a dead, a body, dead right? body. Exactly. <clears throat> so it's a, it's like a humorous take on 
some of the most interesting autopsies she's done. And Whoa. she, yeah, she talks about like people who die of natural causes um, through to people who have died in these random circumstances that you couldn't predict through to homicides. But um, one thing she talks about is the health. She, you can tell a lot about the health of a person by the way their organs look when an autopsy is performed apparently. Okay. And so she'll talk about how um, when she looks at a heart of a person who's like overweight and unfit, there'll be like basically a layer of like slimy fat around it. Um, and then mm-hmm. if you look at, compare that to a heart of someone who's fit and healthy and like eats well, it just looks totally different. And you can just tell the, the wow. literally the organs look healthier and like more, uh, I don't know. I'd have to look at the book to see the words she used, but I don't want to say more red, but like, you know, you know, like a healthy person just has a look about them or mm. the organs, it's the same thing. The Like, like uh, a slim like person has organs that don't have a layer of fat around them. Color, yeah. And I was like, man, if I ever get autopsy, I want the, I want the, I want the person doing the autopsy to be like, this guy was like well healthy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. And you'll never know. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> you could wake up mid- midway. Ah! Jeez, oh. imagine that. Okay. Anyway. Check my liver. <laughs> hey, so wow. <laughs> uh, you got any? Uh, you got any hot hot snap downage? I got two hot snap downs. Well, let's do one at a time. Oh, I want okay. you to go. I want you to go first. Uh, hot snap down number one. Um, we, I did a little. I think it was on Facebook post on the Snapdown group. Uh, Photoshop has been updated for Apple Silicon. Oh yeah, right. Which is exciting. Mm-hmm. It's exciting because maybe they'll do Lightroom next. Uh, don't really care about Photoshop that much on its own. No, no, not really. <laughs> and interesting, interestingly, part of the update it said, uh, I'm, and I think I interpreted it correctly, that Photoshop cannot be – if you update Photoshop to the new Apple Silicon version, you can't use it with Lightroom at all because oh, so Lightroom, you, they don't talk to each other. So you can't say export to Photoshop. Double, yeah, command E. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it's on Apple Silicon, the other one isn't. So even though it's great that it's been updated, I basically Still now can't useless. use it at all. Um, I mean, well, it's more, sorry, that's bad. I'll, yeah. I'll pull totally it down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but it doesn't matter because I'm still using my old Mac for my uh, Lightroom stuff, uh, which is going quite well. Greg, how often in a typical wedding are you actually um, moving a file between, say, sending it to Photoshop from Lightroom, doing something and then bringing it back into Lightroom, continuing? On average? Yeah, like your normal wedding, do you ever do that? Yeah, I'd say if I averaged it, Tom. Yeah, I want to know an average. Would you like to know an average? Greg, I want I want an average. I do. I want an average. Two two point five times. Okay. So, so the so old command E, and and what that probably really means is like for some like a lot of weddings none, and then for some weddings like ten. Oh, yeah. yeah, there'll be this like run of photos. I'm like, oh my god. Uh, okay, and and I suppose are you doing that mostly for things like um, the dreaded like double chin, or are you removing like power like lines and stuff? Mm. I'm just doing anything where the Lightroom um, clone stamp isn't doing it, which is yeah. m- more often than I'd like. Yeah, right. Because it's not that good. Yeah, but no, sometimes it's like power lines. Sometimes it's like stupid stuff. Um, usually the Lightroom one's pretty good. I'm trying mm. to think why I would use the Photoshop one because there are times when you just know it's a job for Photoshop. Oh, you, you just look at it. You're like, there's oh, no Oh, face no swapping. Way. F- face swapping? Yeah, like let's just say I've got this like really good family photo and um, oh, there's and one dude blinking and the I've just worked out because maybe I've t- taken three and in two of them, two people are blinking and in one of them only one person is and it's an easy face swap. Mm. So I'll just select two. Here's a little cheat for you. <laughs> Mini snapdown, <laughs> bonus snapdown. If you are in develop mode, and you are obviously working on a photo and you can push command E, it'll go, it'll take that photo into Photoshop, right? Yep. If you're in uh, library mode yep. and you do command E, same thing happens. Yep. If you are in grid mode, you can then select multiple photos and push command E. Oh, and, and it'll it puts take them all over. All of them over. So if you have a series of photos that mm. are all having the same thing that needs fixing or whatever. Yep. Or might- a face swap where you you know that you're going to take the face from that photo and put it on that photo. 
go to grid mode, click both, command E, and it'll take them both to Photoshop. Damn. How about that? Do you, is that, okay, I'm thinking about, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be the guy who's like, that's cool, but would I use that? And I'm trying to think of when I, because well, for face swapping. I, oh, okay. If so you got a bunch of, if you got it, yeah, okay, I see what you mean. Because um, you have to get a new face from somewhere. Right. So if you've got two, you need the second photo, at least one other photo. Yeah. I, I don't remember the last time I've used that command E function. Are you just like, who cares? He's blinking. He can just. Man, do you know what I do? S- uh, listen. <laughs> Delete it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. If it's not a family photo, I just crop it, like to get rid of the power line or whatever. <laughs> oh, and yeah, it, yeah. Crop and if it's hard, a, yeah. And if it's a family photo, and I, if let's say I had like five family photos and, and there's some dude blinking in everyone, mate, look, sorry, but just Guess don't what? blink. Like, you're a blink. You're I'm a not blink a magician. Idiot. Exactly. <laughs> you're not I'm a magician. Like, so you're. Uh, uh, kind of are. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. No, I'm. I'm. I like to try. Oh my god, I did one the other day, Tom. Um, I had this wedding where um, the running joke was, oh, he can fix it in Photoshop. So the the MC, there was one photo where something happened, and I was like, oh, don't worry, bro, I'll fix it in Photoshop, and like physically elbowed him and winked, like did you? As, as if to say, yeah, right, like no way, pal. <laughs> anyway, so then it became a running gag, and then. They had this uh, disabled, um, uh, what was he like a great uncle or something? He's in mm-hmm. a wheelchair and he was up in the uh, reception room. Meanwhile, the photo's happening on the lawn and they were like, oh, can you Photoshop him in? <sighs> wow. I was like, you know what? I'll do it just for you. It's that I'll dreaded. Do it. It's that dreaded thing where someone says, he can Photoshop it. And you're just like, yeah. <sighs> Um, so I, yeah, I, and uh, as I'm doing it, I'm like, okay, so this photo of the group, we're in the most intense February sun <laughs> on the, on a cliff. Oh, wow. Uh, and the guy is inside in the shade, oh, <laughs> in a wheelchair. Goodness. So I did, I just did my best and you know what? It actually looked pretty good. Like, I don't think that notice. And I wow. even put in, I put in the second photo of him just in the wheelchair, just so that when they flick between, they're like, hey, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Where'd that come from? <laughs> well, but I, my, my photo, sh- like, I would guess that, okay, 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 okay. I'm going to ask you, Tom. <laughs> okay. I, and uh, this is another percentage question. I love these questions. What percent do you think you, um, is, would be your knowledge base of Photoshop? Um, it would be in the range of zero to one point eight percent. Yeah, I'd be. Is that what you? Ex- yeah, right. It's definitely closer to zero than yeah. any other number. Man, I don't know. I get the photo into Photoshop, and then I basically just mash a bunch of buttons and press a bunch of things, and just oh, what's that do? Ooh. Ah, undo. That looks nice. Yeah, command Z, command Z, command Z. No, I only pretty much use it for liquify. Or, okay, liquify to get rid of like, a, a, you know, a double chin yeah. or like a, you know, a large, yeah. a larger um, elbow or something like that. Or like, sure. Yeah. Know, or, or, yeah, like Th- you saying, things that things stamp. that don't need to be mentioned. Yeah. No one needs yeah. to know. Um, but my preference is definitely just to delete the photo and not edit it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. What's your favorite? What's your favorite key in Photoshop? It's the delete key. The command Q. It's the no key because it never got to Photoshop. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Photo what? <laughs> it's so true, man. Like yeah, I man. don't know, but my sister actually did a like a course. Like she has a diploma in in Photoshop, more or less. Wow. So she really knows it. She knows everything. So she gets the dreaded like text message from Greg. Hey who? <laughs> How do I do <laughs> this <laughs> thing? <laughs> <laughs> Funny. <laughs> oh man and that's but that's really useful does her because she's a graphic designer by trade right yeah so just do her skills in photoshop um as i imagine the skill set for graphic design it, it might not be as specific as it might be to edit a, a wedding photo but do those skills translate very well so like the thing she knows is she can she apply them really easily to your wedding photos and still you know what i mean i do know what you mean and i don't know tom what do you keep knocking over? I keep knocking like- my lip balm off my... T- <laughs> wow. My monitor... Sounds like a shot glass. My monitor razor. Razor. A shot glass, no? Yeah, sorry. Uh, I okay. think that someone who's trained in graphic design would find it quite hard to... This is me just guessing. Yeah. Would find it quite hard to quickly edit a wedding. Okay. Because you'd be like... Oh, Very detail-oriented, eh? I can do... And then they'd be like... You'd be like, oh my God, I'm only using like 
zero to what did you say? One point eight percent of <laughs> zero my to 1. knowledge 8%. base. <laughs> Man, I freely admit the same as you. I do not know what is going on in Photoshop. I mean, and sometimes I think that's bad. I wonder if we're photographers and it's literally called Photoshop. Mm-hmm. Like, should we be having well, a, a better grasp on that? Okay, s- s- follow-up question. Okay. What percentage of Lightroom do you think you know? Mate. Oh, listen. Um, now I'm thinking, oh, God. Um, I was going to say about 90, but then I was like, mm, sometimes I look at my preset and I hate it and I decide to change it and then I mm. move some sliders and I basically don't know what I've done. <laughs> so I just command Z, command Z, command Z, command Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I reckon, I reckon I'm very well, I reckon 60% of Lightroom I'm very well versed in. But, yeah. but the other 40, maybe 30 to 40%, um, like, okay, something that, something that is a never ending mystery to me is the tone curve. Oh, of course. Yeah. Okay, so I I know I like what my time curve does, and I know if I pull the right hand side down, it um the whites kind of go more gray, and I know if I pull the left hand side up, the blacks get yeah like more gray as well. More gray, yeah. yeah. But um I also know because I've been told by some people who know Lightroom really well that the the changing the tone curve is like you can achieve crazy stuff by moving the tone curve in really interesting ways, mm-hmm. and I just have no idea how to do that, and I don't know. And with the different colors as well, not just the yeah t- total or the black and white. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I know some photographers who have achieved really interesting looks in their edits just by playing with the tone curve and I just don't even know where to start with that. Yeah, because sometimes I wonder if uh, the, the, the aspects of my preset are conflicting with each other. You know, right. like, like I'm, know trying exactly to push, what you mean. I'm trying to push something here, but then I'm taking it away. Over so here, you might be pulling up the shadows in the slider, but you might be doing something in your tone curve, which is effectively making more shadow. Exactly, and right. and I'm and I'm just uh, adjusting. I don't know, like, well, it's more in the colors. It's more because I use the. I've got all my color presets. You know, you've got your hue, saturation, mate. Luminance. TSO one. T- oh yeah, 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 yeah. I thought all you that. meant. I thought you meant the actual presets, like the. <sighs> No, 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 no. That's why I was like TSO one, TSO two, TSO three, TSO four, TSO five, new, TSO six, new, new. I've got what have I got? GCWP BNW Feb twenty one. GCWP <laughs> color trial. <laughs> trial. Yeah, I do. I I gave up because oh. I had to do it by month, so I knew what they were. Oh, that's awesome, yeah, man. Okay. And then, oh my god, I could just should I just read off a few? Yeah, man. Oh, bo- bo- boss. Boss. That that's like boss when you're like three. This is a legendary preset. <laughs> And I'm clicking it and it's awful. Oh, God, I bet. I got Boss. I got Boss 3. I got Boss 2020. Boss Color. Boss Color Boss Color, color two. final updated February 2021. <laughs> and then I've got Boss with an exclamation <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet most people listening have exactly the same like preset like situation. Okay, okay. Listen to this. Okay. September Blue. Oh. Sony 2, Sony 3, Sony 4, Sony BMW, Sony Master BNW light. So funny. Sony Master no pink. No pink. <laughs> <laughs> awesome blue. Awesome. You can see why people <laughs> buy presets. Yeah. Awesome blue. What does Sony that mean? Latest. <laughs> Sony what? Uh, latest. Sony latest. Sony Master Sunset. Ooh. So you, now, you have to on. realize I use none of these. None of them. Mate, these should. are all just getting to the this is the okay, so that my absolute num this is I only use two presets. I've got GWC black and white Feb twenty one and GWC color Feb twenty one. Okay. And are these presets based on anything or like a, a preset that you bought or are they have you have you made them from scratch? I couldn't even tell you. Right? I couldn't they're just so know, bastardized like, over the Exactly. Over time. I think I can claim that they are hundred percent mine, mate. I mean, funny. if you really did some digging, you'd probably be like, oh. but a... <laughs> any preset's going to have one thing in common with any other mm. preset. See, mine. Um, you know, you, we both used to use Visco, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, everyone yeah, used yeah. to use. Well, yeah. maybe me more than you. I think I always try. That. I really wanted to use Visco, but I just couldn't quite get the look that yeah. I wanted. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so I used Portra 400 for like six years. And mm. then I was like, why am I using this? Like, why do I'm using presets someone else made? Like I should make my own. So, But what I did do is I I um, sampled the color, the HSL slider. Ah, yeah, yeah. Like I sampled those. So, you know, a bit more blue there, a bit more green there, a bit more whatever. Um, so I think my preset is based on that. But like you said, it's been changed so many times. So who knows? 
Um, now, listen. Have you got any snap downs? Matt, I, I have two snap downs. Um, <clears throat> the first is a simple update. I ordered, I pre ordered my 50 mil 1.2. Oh, snap. Um, that's pretty cool. So pre orders opened yesterday. So mine should be coming early May. Wow. Uh, and I will give you a full review once that arrives. Me. So that's that's it for my first one. Hey, how's the 35? Oh, it's fantastic. Um, Is it like, listen, Tom, I know what you're like. And you have the honeymoon period with gear. <laughs> and then you fall out of love. <laughs> So fast. And then I'm like, how's that X item? And you're like, oh, it's gone. It's, I saw it. <laughs> Pissed that off. No, okay. So um, I previously had the 85 1.8 and then I upgraded to the, the GM, the 1.4. And it's a notice, noticeable difference. Mm-hmm. And you can just tell the GM lenses have a look to them. Everything is better. The, mm. the out of focus area is better and they edit nicer, the color is nicer, the autofocus is nicer. So it's the same with the 35. Like everything about the images with it are just better. The The contrast okay. is way better. The colors mm-hmm. look way better. I don't think there'll be a honeymoon period with this lens because it's such a staple in my kit. Like okay. um, I'm trying to think, does that make sense? Like it's not like some new toy that I will use and then I'll find something else because literally there is nothing yeah. else. It's just no, the top. It's, it's the top. For us who shoot 35 all the time, it's it's the absolute top lens you can get nice. for, for a Sony. So um, it's very, very good. Um, it's very small and light and, yeah, it's it's awesome. Nice, bro. Very cool. So, yeah, I, it's, I'm getting one. But I, it's just that there are none in New Zealand uh, or anywhere. And so none, I kind of missed that. Yeah. I missed that first um, whatever. Release. First, first release, yeah. I think it had something to do with the whole – remember they had a screw-up with their production? Mm. Uh, I, think, I think the thing is that the first ones that came out like weren't that good and then yeah. they, um, the next ones will be way better that's what I'm thinking damn it so I'll have to get another one <laughs> do, you want to, do you want to buy my 35 for you? Uh, yes <laughs> <laughs> I do um, okay mean I've got one more snappage bring it on um, I could um, also plug one of our listeners Alan <clears throat> and oh. Ellen, Ellen, it, does this Alba- snap down start with W? Yes, ah, we share the same second ah. snap down. I'm going to let you do it though. It's so I'm just going to. Uh, Ellen's last name is Alba 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 Rizanchi. Alba Rizanchi, great surname. Alba Rizanchi, and um, Ellen's Ellen's the man. What a legendary tip he gave us, eh? Yeah, yeah. Although I already had it in my thing. Oh, so. did you already have it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're truly. Uh, so yeah, Alan. Alan said uh, we should check it out. And um, it what is it called? Already, uh, it called? it's called Wand. W A N D. And um, speaking of Greg missing out on things, uh, I missed out on downloading that as well because they closed the beta release. And so I've put my email down to. Are you be serious? On the list. Yeah, I got it on my laptop, but not on my um, not on my Mac Pro. <sighs> Classic Tom yeah. swooping in. <laughs> Getting the worm before Greg's even out of bed. <laughs> 6 30 a.m. with a coffee. And yet, and yet I'm two hours ahead. Right. Right. Oh, bummer, man. Sorry. I wonder if I'm not okay. Send you, know. you the Well, hang on. Let's just what are we talking about? Okay, okay. Well, no, you can't. You, this well, we're having it. I've I'll I've buttered them up. Now you um finish them off. <clears throat> um listen, this is a Lightroom plugin. That's what I like about it. So it runs within Lightroom. Mm-hmm. And, okay, listen, it helps you cull. It is not th- – there's one other bit of software that came out recently that uh, I guess is a be-all and end-all cull, which allegedly culls the whole wedding for you. This, Are you talking about narrative? Uh, uh, not the guys I, from narrative. Yeah, maybe. yeah, 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 which I have not I tried. I forgot what it's called. Uh, is it called? Select. Uh, sure. I don't Something. know. Yeah, everyone but, knows what I'm talking about. This one, as far as I can tell, wand, what it does, it simply uh, cuts down the, cuts a lot of the chaff out of, so if you have 3000 photos and you run this, you can, uh, it will hopefully, might, it might cull that down to like 2000 or 2200. So it will get rid of like identical duplicates and it will get rid of um, ones where people's eyes are closed, but it it's not... My understanding is it's not trying to do a full cull. It's just trying to, yeah, like I said, make yeah, the f- take, 
take away the obviously the the bad really ones. bad ones. And the cool thing is, you can run it on import. So while you're while you're rendering previews, it can run. Um, did you read how it does that? It's pretty cool. Yeah, it sends it up to the cloud. And Puts like little JPEGs up to the cloud and runs it through their algorithm. Yeah. And then it sends back like a, and after it's finished, it sends back a collection into your yeah. Lightroom folder. So then you have a collection saying like wand curated photos or whatever. And then if you're a Tom, you've got like, you know, four or five good photos left. <laughs> Savage. Savage. <laughs> Savage. Select your best one. <laughs> and you're like, that's that's it. That's <laughs> but I mean, look, I think anything that can help us cull, because culling, we've agreed, culling is like awful. The devil of our work, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you have you actually tried it? So no. So, so you downloaded it and, did nothing. And, and and you made it so I couldn't try it. I, I did. I took you your copy. didn't even use it. That's 100% what I did. And I did that with the so cruelest true. of intent. But you know what? I'm going to do it for this weekend's wedding and see how it goes. Did you did you snicker like Muttley at any time? I can't. You can do the best. <laughs> yeah. D- wow. There's no vocal. It's just. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Listen though, Greg. It's just exhaling. Isn't isn't wand? Wand is simply a Lightroom plugin. Correct. I could just send it to you. What? Well, it's just a plugin file, isn't it? I guess. Mate, Dude, I'm gonna do def- definitely gonna put it in our uh, have a look in my shared laptop. shared Dropbox thingy. I'll have a look in on my laptop, and, and I see. guarantee you it won't work on I know. M1. It's like doesn't work on <laughs> Apple Silicon. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I better quit Lightroom because it's really doing <gasps> stupid things. Um, hey, brah. Uh, wow. Any well, other snap down? Well, that was my last one too. So, uh, yeah, Wand is a, uh, the website is like postpro.ai. So P- yeah, post pro, yeah. P O S T P R O dot A I. Not it's not to do with Wand. Do you think we should develop something? Tom? I really do, but what do you I, do? What, what do we develop? Well, everything's been done. Right? What would you okay. What if someone if some developer said, listen, I have a million dollar budget, I want to Oof. develop a bit of software for you that will make your job just way easier. Mm. What would you want? What would a realistic Thing, not like you know, an auto cull edit and deliver in ten minutes. <laughs> like, yeah. is this is there a realistic bit of software that could possibly be designed that would help you? I'd have to really think about it. Like, what? I don't really have any huge pain points. Uh, no bottlenecks. Bottlenecks, pain points. Um, I don't know. Have you got anything that jumps out? I mean. Yeah. I'm sort of the same as you. I, f- I feel like maybe if they could buy Adobe and rework Lightroom mm. just to make it a lot faster. I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. Look, an auto culling software would be great, but it can't possibly replace our yeah. own judgment, it, can it? You have to, at the end of the day, you still have to check every photo because every photo is like a, a product that you're sending to this client that's representing your brand. So you still have to check every photo. There's nothing you can do to get around that. Mm. So, yeah. And then like a lot of people on the the Facebooks have been saying, yeah, it's all well and good to, you know, export your editing or, you know, outsource editing or whatever, but you still have to go through every photo. Hmm. I don't know, Tom. I don't know what I'd develop. I think maybe I'd be looking more at, rather than just photography, the the broader, I'd be looking at pain points for the bride and groom in a whole wedding rather than just for me. Yeah, just, yeah. Something I'm, to I'm do thinking with their, hard, but yeah. their workflow. Maybe like we I need think, to put a, put a, like a thinking pin in that and come back and... Because mm. there'll be something. There's always something out there you can improve on. But then usually you have this amazing, like Kat and I came up with this incredible idea to help brides and grooms with all their planning. Mm-hmm. We're like, yeah, yeah. And we got on this big rant about it. And like Kat was writing notes. And we're like, oh, yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> we got to do this. <laughs> and then uh, Nick Minute, it's already, they feel like four uh, of them already exist. What was and the idea? Good. Oh, it was just all about like um, integrating all the different vendors and all the different things and making lists and workflows. Oh, and so a, uh, like an like organization. A, tool for, so that everyone yep. everyone works together and sees everyone's timing and whatever. 
Yeah, yeah. And then basically it's already been done like four or five times. Uh, I was like, oh, well, that was yeah, it saved us a lot of work. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> so funny. Um, got any huge, like, big topics, buddy? Hey, guys, just a quick note from me, Tom, because Greg and I totally forgot to talk about our sponsors during our episode. So I'm just going to record this and insert it quickly. Uh, I think you guys probably know about our sponsors now, but just in case you don't. Our first is, of course, our favorite CRM platform, which is called Studio Ninja. CRM is, of course, client relations management uh, platform. We love these guys. We've used them since the beginning, probably five years or so now. They make our entire workflows much easier. We have a 50% off for the first year discount code, and that is snappening five zero. Uh, our next is Queensbury, which is an amazing album company based in New Zealand, and uh, they're incredible. We have an awesome discount code for them, which is snappening 19 which will give you 50% off all studio sample albums and 40% any of their 40% off any of their workspace subscriptions, and that includes the lifetime subscription. And finally, I've raved about smart albums and smart slides quite a lot by Pixilu, one of my uh, one of the integral parts of my wedding photography workflow. We have a discount for them too. And uh, that's 20% off for all their products for your first year. That discount code is SPG20. And now back to your regular programming. Okay, so we need to talk about this message we received from a lovely uh, snapping disciple. Rochelle. And Rochelle Whittle. And now, yep, can you see, just so we can shout her out properly, can you see Rochelle's like uh, website or something or Insta or something or Facebook you know, page? What? I thought you could. Actually, Just, no, I can't. Okay, right. but I'll I'll get there. Can you I'll get, get there? there? I'm gonna read out um, her her uh, business is Pure Images. Pure Images. Where's she based? In t- uh, Tauranga, which oh. is uh, aren't you from like a uh, Tauranga? Ma Maja. Ma Maja is from ta- that place. Ma Maja. Maja. Um, uh, I'm just trying to find her actual website. Actual. Okay, address. do that oh, quietly. Pure Images. Oh, she's it. Okay. <laughs> Rochelle's the bomb. Do you have you met her? No. Okay. Oh, have I? I thought all sorry, Kiwis had met each other. Sorry, sorry, Rochelle. Oh, have we met? Greg's I can't up. Remember. Greg's up. <laughs> poo poo creek without a paddle. I might have because she's in um, Tauranga. Um, she's practically your neighbour. I was going to say that's probably the reason we wouldn't have met. <laughs> okay, listen. So here's what uh, she said. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm just looking to see if. Oh yeah, right. You've sent me. Okay, this is the message that the venue put up. Okay, so. Oh, what I th- do you want? I thought. I thought this is what. This is what. You, I thought you sent me what Rochelle had said to us, but this is not. Okay, so well, I'll send you that too. Here you go. Yeah, please do. Uh, so I'll read that part. I'll read this part. Okay, go, go. She said, "Hey, boys. Hey, boys. Hey, boys. <laughs> uh, check this out, and would love your thoughts on this occurring. On this occurring. Uh, he's actually a venue owner in Australia. Eek! I've spoken Eek. up r- respectfully." But he simply doesn't get it. Bastard. Venue owners posting and taking photos over the photographer's back. Mate, when I read that, I was I was a bit livid and I hadn't even read like any more. So is she's talking about situations where a wedding photographer is shooting at a wedding venue, shooting the couple, and the guy who owns the venue rocks up behind her with a with a pro level camera and starts shooting his own portraits and then shares those portraits to I guess the venue's page. That's the situation she's talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so she sent us a screenshot of a post made by the venue owner. And it looks to me, she didn't tell us where it was posted, but it, it looks to me like it was posted in a um, some sort of photography question and answer group on Facebook, like a, well, you know, Brides of the Gold Coast or whatever region. I have no idea. Um, I have no idea where this where, who this person is or where the wedding venue is. Um, but shall I just read it out? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, so the uh, the venue owner says the following. My RF 28 to 70 F2 arrived today after a nine-week wait. And this with the RF 70 to 200 2.8 makes the family complete. Idiot. Que- yeah, idiot. Straight up canon idiot. <laughs> a question for all the professional wedding photogs out there. Which of these two lenses would you put on which camera to shoot with on the wedding day and why? 
We are a venue, so we take professional photos to use in our social media and marketing campaigns. I will be slinging both cameras from a black rapid harness and shooting stills only. Our photos are all action from bride's arrival through to first dance, so we rarely encroach on the professional photographer's pose shots. What? Uh, thanks for your help. There's a lot to unpack here. There's a lot. This is such a good topic. Can we just – okay, can, can you dissect what I just read? What What is – right. Well, he's kind of bragging, isn't he? I guess it's a part he's of like, it is a brag. Oh, my God. Uh, look, I've got <laughs> this look 20, 28 to 70 F2. And it's got the 70 to 200 f2.8. It makes the family complete. And Nick, meanwhile, he doesn't realize that no one uses Zooms, pal. No, exactly. Um, well done with your Zooms. A, a question for all the f- professional wedding photogs out there. Which of these two lenses would you put on which camera? To sh- I mean, what the hell does that even mean? Like, he hasn't told us which camera. I mean, I'm guessing maybe there was a message telling. He's like, oh, one of my cameras is a 1000D. And one's like a R5 and, or something. And one's the original... Yeah, no, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the original 7D or something like that. 7D. Um, yeah, because one, maybe one's a crop sensor and one... Probably, because he's an idiot. But um, anyway, I digress. <laughs> um, and then he says, oh, at the venue, we take professional photos. Well, professional? To use in our social media and marketing campaigns. So I'll be slinging. I love that he uses that term. Slinging. Would you ever use that term? No, I mean, not really. Both cameras from a black rabbit. Er, no one uses black rabbit. Yeah, no, terrible. Um, just, I'm so sorry to people that use Canon and black oh, rabbit. No, that, I mean, he's lost half our listeners. Yeah. Um, but now this is the real part here. Um, our photos are all action from bride's arrival through to first dance. So we rarely encroach on the professional photographer's posed shots. So he's talking about the portraits there. I think. Well, Greg, is he basically saying... So on the wedding day, he'll have whatever. There'll be there'll be his staff running the wedding, and there'll be like a venue manager running the wedding, and there'll be and there'll be well, like caterers, and then he'll be taking and photos. Then he's like the owner, but he's obviously got a a a, um, a, a penchant. What do you call it? A penchant. A penchant for for for, for, photography. for photography. I was going to say his, something else. But I, oh, <laughs> say it. He's got a boner. A boner. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a camera boner. A camera. Boner. I think that's allowed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so he wants to look cool. He wants to be like the sweet camera guy. Now, what um, is interesting is that he says, we are a venue, so we take professional photos. But then later he says, we really encro- encroach on the professional photographer's pose shots. So uh, listen, Greg, you are, in a, you are a wedding photographer and you're at a venue. You rock up for the ceremony. You've done prep off-site. Mm-hmm. And, there, and there's another dude who as far as you know looks like a pro photographer like he's got big gear well he's slinging a black he's, he's slinging he's not just holding a camera he's slinging two cameras on a black rapid so what do you if, okay what, what's your initial you rock up to the wedding you're, sl- you're shooting the ceremony details before the bride arrives and you see old mate with his black rapid and like what's your <laughs> what's your first thought i mean you, you're pretty uh, you're like oh what what's this guy doing yeah, I know. I no, but I wouldn't think what's this guy doing? I'd be like, "Oh boy. What have we got here?" He's probably asked the bride and the bride has said, "Yeah, of course, it's fine." Not realizing that I have in my contract that, you know, I'm the only photographer on the day, all that stuff. So he's in breach of her contract, but she's probably given him verbal permission. Look, dude, it literally happened to me at my last wedding. Um, what? You know the wedding where I was super fit and I ran along the beach? Oh, I do. I, I have that visual in my head still. Mm-hmm. It's a good one. Uh, when I got to the ceremony, there were two ladies there with uh, zoom lenses taking photos. Proper. They, like, they, that's they were, all they were doing. They, they were, were walking. They were, were they guests? They, they, weren't, they never sat down. They were 100% oh. taking photos the whole time. And uh, I was just like, what? the thing is, you can't say anything there because the you run the risk of being, what, what do you run the risk of? Of being a problem, of well, ruffling you just, you, feathers. Yeah, ex- exactly. You you don't want to be that guy who's like causing trouble uh, on the best causing day of these stress. people's lives. So, so I think 
maybe this is me being too nice, but I think the only thing you can do is to bring it up after. Yeah, I and tend say, to hey, uh, hey, professional uh, dual camera slinging guy, venue owner, this is how it made me feel on the day, which mm. affects my my uh, ability to work. Plus, you're in breach of my contract. All of these reasons, this is why you can't do what you're doing, matey potato. Matey potato, that's a new one from Greg Campbell. <laughs> um, what do you think? Or would you would you be a little bit more um No, you can't firm? just Okay, here, here's the thing. Um if if I have a, a contract with my couple and in my contract it says I'll be the only wedding photographer on the day, and then the couple has a contract with a venue, and in that contract maybe there's something that says, Oh, uh, we might we'll we might take some photos on the day for our own social media. The bride and groom are like, whatever. Right. We don't You're care. probably right, Tom. Right. So then we rock up to the wedding. There's there's two agreements in place. There's ours that says we're the only pro photographer, which we are, because old mate from the venue, not a pro photographer. He mm. owns the venue and happens to be there taking photos. Like then you have to go into like what is a pro photographer and he is not one by the definition. So then we have this problem where we have two uh, separate agreements which really don't encroach on each other. Um, and I, I guess in my opinion, um, all we can do is like you said, first of all, maybe talk to the venue after and be like, look, this really hampers our ability to do our job Um on the day because you know that feeling when someone tries to shoot over your shoulder during portraits mm, it's mm, i get i get just blind with anger i absolutely hate it yeah, yeah i have yeah. to like contain my rage mm-hmm. it's kind of um, an overreaction i have to say <laughs> no but but you're not doing your best work i feel like i'm being just watched and judged and it's 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 my time with the couple i don't want to mm. share it with someone else and it affects the quality of my work. But then the other thing to do would be to proactively talk to the couple and be like, um, I mean, I just, what a dumb conversation. Ask your venue if there's going to be a photographer from them and tell them don't. Like you can't have that with every couple, can you? No. Is it a matter of identifying venues that do this and any couple who books that venue that you're shooting at say, hey, I had a situation at this venue recently where they presumed that they had the right to send this photographer, this full-on dude to follow me and copy all my poses and stuff and I want you to contact the venue and say that's not happening at my wedding. Mm. Is that reasonable? I think it is, Tom. And I think it's, yes. I, I th- Well, <laughs> I'm not it's sure. Hard, it's really hard because it's kind of like, it's kind of like an Uncle Bob but just taken to the extreme. And I don't mind an Uncle Bob at a wedding. Because generally, Uncle Bob's don't interact with a couple. They take their photos and they look at them and they take them home and put them on the computer and whatever, play around. Mm-hmm. But they're not like interacting with the couple. They're not talking to them. They're not asking them to do things. Yeah. If the guy from the venue was the same as that, then I can shrug it off. Mm. But if he's saying, hey, hey, can I, you know, any communication, any like, oh, could you do this? Oh, could you do that? Oh, could you just wait there? Um, I'd be like, no, 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 no. So maybe that could go into your contract where you're like, uh, no other photographer can like, um, interact with you guys. Oh, it's hard, isn't it? Mm. Um, I don't know if there's any way you can fix this scenario with your own contract. I think it has to be, I think it has to be. I booked a wedding at this venue. Um, oh, last time I was there, this happened. Tell the couple, hey, heads up, this happened. It's, it was really bad. The couple then says to the venue, FYI, I don't want this on my wedding day. Like mm-hmm. I don't see any other. And then if, if you did contact the venue directly and say it, it kind of might come across as like a bit sour grapes. Like don't do it. Yeah. Be my couple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Um. I'd really like to have some feedback from Rochelle as to as to like an update. Mm. Um, well, with her to, being in New Zealand, I wonder I wonder how that um, came to be with it being in Australia. She might be, yeah. I mean, maybe she's in the group where it was posted, or maybe she knows someone in that group. But she said so. She has said that she spoke up respectfully. Um, Rochelle, yeah, it'd be cool to actually hear what what you said. It probably, yeah, just like. It could affect your performance on the day, Man, or something like that. Also, 
after the fact, let's say you set the couple up in some epic light and you've got exactly your perfect shot. It's amazing. You've, you've posed them perfectly. You've, you're eliciting that emotion and you're shooting. But then again, old mate with his 200, 200 mil is, is shooting. Mm. Okay. They're never, hopefully, hopefully they're never going to shoot as well as you do because mm -hmm. that's why we're, that's why we're doing this as a job and they're not. But we all know well, if you he's have got, he's got the gear. If he's you have a high, light room, he, if you have a high end camera and a, and a high end lens, and another photographer who's really good has set up a great shot, all you have to do is point the camera in that direction, and like, even if it's, even if you're on P or, or green box mode, you know, mm. a, an okay shot will probably come out, and then then if that if that guy posts that shot to the um, venue Instagram, it just becomes a really confusing situation. Like, who shot this? Who yeah. was the professional? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's 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 a bad situation. I, I think so it's frustrating. I feel like I keep going back to the contract and I keep not knowing how to actually word it. But in your contract, do you need to say something like your intellect, the photographer's intellectual property isn't just the photography, but the it 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 encompasses not just the digital assets, but also the um the the skill set and the I don't, I don't even want to call oh, it posing, I know what you're but, saying. I know what you're saying. But the knowledge base as well. I don't know, man. I don't know how to... I, I, I question what the point it would be of doing that because the issue here isn't your agreement with the couple. It's the couple's agreement with a third, with the venue. So like the couple can agree to your um your contract, but then they, they're also, they also sign the contract with the venue without probably reading it. And then on the wedding day, the problem happens, you know, like, and it's too late to stop it. Um, I'll give this feedback that uh, if this does happen to anyone out there, uh, there are people out there listening that are more experienced than me, but there are people that are less experienced as well. Um, Tom, give me your feedback, but this is how I treated it last weekend when I had these two ladies. So I turned up and I saw a lady with a zoom lens and like uh, it was a Canon 7D. Um, I could tell because she had her strap around her neck. Okay, so it said that it's like red flag, red flag, red flag, like <laughs> amateur, amateur, and a big yeah. zoom lens, like one of those ones you'd never buy, like a um, seventy to five to three hundred, or oh, one of those yeah. really weird F, ones. F five point six to eight. Point exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I was like, oh hi, hi. And she's she's like, oh yeah, hey, how's it going? And she was like, oh, are you the photographer? And I was like, yeah, yeah. What are you up to? You just like taking a few snaps. <laughs> Who she's are like, you? <laughs> yeah. And she's like, oh yeah, yeah. She was really coy. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, I haven't got time to like. Yeah. interrogate you and so but um i was like okay that's cool so i've got her to worry about and then i saw another like twin of her like same exact looking not a twin but just the exact same mm -hmm. uh, type of lady mm -hmm. with the same kind of camera and so they were just going around the whole the whole time and in my mind i was just like well i'm here i'm being paid i'm doing my job like i have to take the photos that this couple have seen in my portfolio and that yeah. you know they're expecting me to take so I was just like, I'm going to pretend these ladies aren't here. And yeah. uh, if I wanted to be somewhere and one of those ladies was where I wanted to be, I would just stand, stand directly in front. in front of her. 100%. And in my mind, I wasn't like thinking, oh, stuff you. <laughs> I love how I'm you scared. put on a weird, hectic, strong New Zealand accent, whatever you. <laughs> uh, I wasn't. I can please promise I wasn't thinking that. I was just thinking this is the job. photo I want to take. Yep. This is where I need to be to take the photo. Here I am. And be I wasn't going to... I wasn't going to stand there for any longer than I needed to. I was just going to get there, take the photo. Did part of you take great pleasure in standing in front of them? I would have taken flex, flex the muscle. Pleasure. I'm like, Oof. oh, I'm just doing my job, just my PS. <laughs> How do you like my back? And like, I'm taking the photo, but I'm looking at her. Ooh, that's so cool. <laughs> Slash pass <laughs> passive aggressive. <laughs> um, so no, I was. I think it's totally fine if you are the paid photographer. You have to do the job. You're there to be paid. And there was one point where the two ladies uh, were taking photos of the couple signing, and I went around the back of the table to get a photo of the two of them because I just nice. wanted to like sh share it with Cat or like share nice. it with our Facebook group. And it, you should have seen them scatter. They oh, were, I bet <laughs> you could tell they both looked up and saw me, and they just went ah. pew. Did you ever and figure? I thought, out I thought, to were? be fair, like they got out of my way. Who who were they? Were they were they guests? Like, did you? Were they, did they come to the reception? Well, that's the thing is because um, I I sh I, I, I oh, finished you didn't shoot. right after the ceremony, so I was just like drop mic, sweet up, sweet up. <laughs> Make sure you deliver the photo of the of the uncle auntie Jane's 
whatever you call them. Yeah, I uh, I just had that one, and they scattered so fast. I I just like barely got them. It's nothing mm. worth really um, okay posting, and because I couldn't really like get photos of the two of them during the ceremony because like sometimes you can stuff around and do that kind of stuff, mm. but this just wasn't one of those ceremonies. <laughs> it was, you know, you have a point, Greg. That sometimes when we photographers get all pedantic about eh, another photographer, like we're still getting paid and. We still yeah. document the day to our best of our ability. We edit the photos, we deliver the photos, we've done our job. Like, yeah, really, we could also, you could argue that, right? Like, who cares if there's other people taking photos? Like, who cares? Yeah. It um, doesn't, yeah. Cat had an Uncle Bob last weekend. Really? I, lo- I love it when Cat shoots a wedding and she takes photos of things just for me to show you. To sh- like she doesn't tell me, but then I'm, I'm culling and I'm like, oh, I'm like, right. oh, look at this photo. And then I'm like, Oh, she took the, like it'll be a photo of like some great like chair at the house, <laughs> and it'll be just the chair. And I'm like, nice chair, nice chair. Like, I get it. And then That's like awesome. I'm not gonna like I can tell it's not meant for the the album. It's meant for you. So anyway, she's showing um, you. Yeah, yeah. She's like, oh, Greg, look at this chair. Yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm culling at a million miles an hour, culling, and I get to this photo, and it's Uncle Bob, and he's got um, <laughs> he's got oh like a cannon, one of those um. One of those like G seven type cannon. Oh, cameras. like the the little square. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yep. got a little. Probably, I don't know if it was a Canon or a Sony, but a little square one. And then like the next step up, which has like the bigger zoom, you yep. know, like a bit more. But they're both like amateur, like not, not even amateur, like they're not beginner, they're, beginner. Yeah, they're not even crops. They're like four thirds or whatever. Maybe they're crops, but they're not. Very no, good. I don't think so. Maybe crop if you're lucky. Mm. Anyway, he's holding both, oh. and and just using both. Just, oh. just taking photos with both. And Kat did the, <laughs> took a photo of that basically. It took a photo of That's him. That's awesome. And I get there and I'm like, ha, ha, ha. But funny thing is I put it in the album. Did you? <laughs> ah, well, you just look so happy. I don't know. <laughs> Man, that's awesome. Um, but I think, uh, sorry to, to um, segue too badly, but I no, think you're awesome. right, Tom. Like a part of it is kind of like, I think when you're a beginner photographer, like you let everything fly. And then mm. when you've shot a few weddings, you kind of like put your foot down a bit more. But then I kind of think like, and maybe I'm at this point where I'm swinging the other way again, yeah, where I'm me like, too. Meh, I don't really care anymore. You know, like just get in and do my job. You know, the um, the mobile phone rant that, that I went on and, and that what happened with that. Yeah. Um, and now, man, I don't that's care. how I that's how I got to know you because um, I'd never heard of you before that. Oh my! And then um, that oh. came on. I was like, "Who's this T Stu guy? He's so handsome!" Yeah, is he a photographer? Oh my gosh! Everyone, Greg's t- telling an absolute fib right now. <laughs> Greg and I go way back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, now when I'm when people pull out phones when the brides come into the aisle, I just I just go, "Yeah, well, I just step to step to the side." Like it's like you say things that you'd become livid about before you just now you're like man whatever who cares it's exactly right tom uh for for ages now when the, when i'm doing like group shots and there's someone on my you know on my left or right mm-hmm. with a phone mm-hmm. i'll be like hey look at them <laughs> and then they take the photo like they can actually get them out nice of the way photo. yeah, yeah i'm yeah. like you look at them okay now look at me snap 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 cool i've i've got another example of how i've swung the other way uh and that's that imagine like I don't know, five years ago, if someone emailed you and they're like, Tom, oh, we love your work. Oh my God, we really want to book you for our wedding. We we love your, uh, you do an eight hour package, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. We love your eight hour package. Um, listen, could you do four hours, oh, then take good. a two hour break and then do four more hours, total of eight hours working. Mm. Uh, how do you feel about that? Are you asking now, me how I feel I'm, about it now? I'm asking you how five year ago Tom would answer that. Ooh. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if I'm going to give you the answer you you want, <laughs> but I think five years ago Tom would have been pretty angry. Well, okay. how how dare you? <laughs> this is the answer I was expecting. Okay, are you like I'm Thomas Stewart? <laughs> you want me to stay for ten hours? You pay for ten hours. I posted that rant about. <laughs> Cell phones at weddings. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> Don't you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> what? So what? Now, what do you do? In, well, that? I had one. I had one not long ago, and they're like, "Oh, Greg, you know, there's going to be this like big downtime in the middmiddle of the day, and like we don't actually think there's going to be any points to take photos. Like, can we just split it?" And I was like, "Yeah, that sounds really good." <laughs> <laughs> Greg goes to his car, has a nap. Yeah, 
Literally, <laughs> Are I was you like, serious? I said to Kat, I was like, I'll go and have a nap in the car. Oh my god, that's <laughs> awesome. Anyway, they ended up booking me for ten hours, so it didn't matter. Oh, so you um, you, you you made lemonade out of a potential lemon situation. So you you know true. you got the extra two hours, and it's going to be a Disney themed wedding. Oh my, I don't know what I feel how I feel about that. <laughs> Neither do I, but it's going to be incredible. I don't know. But I think, to be honest with you, if that happened to me now, I would still say no. But I wouldn't say no in a shocked, offended way. I'd just be like, yeah, nah. You know, I'd be like, yeah, look, nah, nah. Or look, yeah, nah. if and also like, there's a difference between maybe a one hour break or something between because otherwise it's like death mingling for that three hours. Oh, you have to be able to go and do a thing like have lunch or have a nap in your case. Yeah, or, well, I could. Yeah, exactly. In that. Oh, so good. It would be pretty good though. Like I think about set a couple of alarms. <laughs> yeah, like five. <laughs> I was thinking about like um, how how good it would be if after portraits had an hour break, so portraits finished could go and get a coffee, oh, sit in the car, have a that. relax, like lie down a bit, listen to the typo oh. negative. Like I just know, that's too it's too out there. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen, is it? You could build it into our packages. We require a one hour break between portraits finishing and reception starting. Mm, yeah, obviously I'm kidding, but you know. Interesting how we evolve in our reactions to stuff, isn't it? It is a bit. But the one with the venue is a bit... The reason Rochelle's one is a bit worrying is that it sounds like he's going to be sh- slinging those cameras <laughs> Sling. um, at every wedding. That's the problem. And yeah, I mean, that that would really cramp my style if he's following me during portraits. In fact, I'd, I couldn't handle it. I'd have to have words with him. I mean, it's one thing at the ceremony... But if he's following during portraits, I, I could not I could not abide by that. I, I couldn't. It would really – I had this one a couple of years ago where there was like an Uncle Bob, a hectic uncle. Do you know you know how there's different levels of Uncle Bob? Yeah, yeah. This guy, not only did he have a camera bag uh, with two big uh, cameras um, and big zooms, he had one of those fishing vests on with all those pockets. Oh, I know the ones. Um and so I, many. I, I used built- to think that was like, um, you know, you'd clocked photography when you had one of those. Oh, yeah, you could fit all the filters and all the things you needed, all the batteries. Well, let's be honest, Tom. It was it was um, f- film strips, wasn't it? Oh, it was, it was, wasn't it? That's that's I think right. That's what it was for. I guess it was. So you'd put all your all your different films in there. Yeah, maybe maybe your new ones are on the left, and you you know your used ones are on the right or something. Yeah, I don't know, but he was pretty funny, and I, I told him to like. Uh, he came to portraits Step off, and I, I was like, "Listen, mate, you have five seconds to vacate." This no, premises. actually, what did you say? I bet you were super nice. I first of all, I was giving him hell dirty looks, and he <laughs> saw me, but I was like giving him those like real bitchy stares. <laughs> bitchy, yeah, stares. man. And I was giving him my best, like, <laughs> and then I said, and the bride saw, so I went up to the couple, and I was like, "Look." That guy, I don't really, I can't, I can't really work properly with that dude. I was like, who's that dude? Like, oh, he's my weird uncle. <laughs> I was like, do you, do you mind if I ask him to not follow us? Um, and she was like, absolutely, please do that. Yeah, so you handled it perfectly. I walked up to him. And wait, wait, he, so far you've handled it perfectly. <laughs> so far. <laughs> As I got closer and closer, my heartbeat started going faster and faster. And I went up to him. He's like four feet five. And I'm like what, a big tall. He was pretty short and like okay. dweeby looking and I'm this pretty big unit. And I was like, <laughs> listen, <laughs> um, I really, uh, it's a bit inappropriate for you to be just following us taking photos. And as I was said the sentence, by the time I finished the sentence, he was like, okay. And he left. <laughs> he crumbled <laughs> under my iron will, Greg. I, I dominated him like the Soviet Union. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Very good. <laughs> yeah, no, well done, well done, well done. Um it's it's interesting in time in moments like that where you can choose to frame it as a question or to make a statement. Yeah, right. Because you could say, "Hey, would it be okay?" And immediately he owns you in that moment. <laughs> or you when, can say, "When you oh, I see what you mean." When do you know you, what I mean? Like if what, you're asking his if you're permission, if you're like, if you're do like, you mind? he's like, "Yeah, I do mind." Excuse me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. Alpha, alpha dog has made his presence known. <laughs> we we got to dominate. And maybe that's what Rochelle should do or whoever, not Rochelle because she doesn't work with him. But if you're, if you're working with old mate, you need to, yeah, don't open with a, like a question. Uh, the, uh, 
exactly. Oh, but you and I, Tom, you and I both know if you do it at the wedding it's and bad. it doesn't go exactly the way you want it to go, man, it's, a, it's not a nice outcome. Listen, the solution is, um, okay, you and I put a lot of work into getting the bride and groom on our side, right? <laughs> a lot of work. What about if we? What about if we, as the photographers, say to the bride and the groom, "Hey guys, listen, I want to do the best job I can for you." Would say this at the wedding, during portraits. Say that guy is really cramping my style. Um, do you guys mind saying something to him? Right. And I'm pretty sure that most of my couples who are already like four <laughs> champagnes deep don't give a <laughs> flying. They'd be like, "Oi, we don't want you here. Go away." What do you think? I love it, Tom. I think you're exactly right. It does seem to me a little bit similar to like when you get your parents to go and tell on <laughs> another, <laughs> like tell 100%. another kid's parents that that you you know that you don't like that kid or something, or they're not invited to your birthday or something like 100%, that. Hundred percent, man. So I'll I'll wrestle with that one. Please do. I haven't had a venue owner. Actually, no, I have had venue owners take photos, but not all day like that. Just for just a couple here and there. I've had DJs take some, but I, I don't care about that. They take a few photos, whatever. We've got a few celebrants up here that um, like to like get the old camera out after mm. they've done their celebranting and take a few shots. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's not, not, it's not well received. Do you have any celebrants who like, let's say it's a female celebrant that she might bring her husband and he, he brings the camera? Uh, yes, There's I've one like seen that, that as well. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, uh, what, uh, uh, what can you do, Tom? Mate, you just pray that your photos are better. <laughs> oh, imagine if they weren't. Oh, well, these days, the man, with portrait man. mode and all that. Uh, even, yeah. Dude. It's pretty crazy. So, I don't know. They, I, I don't know. That's. I think we covered that well. Did I we? hope that's... I, th- I, hope, I know that Rochelle wasn't asking us how she should solve it. I think she was just like raising the topic. But if that happens to you, I think... Um. Yeah. I think if it happens once, maybe consider talking to the venue. And if yeah. it's happening in the moment, I would think, well, personally, I would, if I have a cool couple, I'd get the couple to tell the dude to back off. That's yeah. what I'd do. I think um, my advice would be persevere. Don't let it get to you. And you'll 100%. probably find by the end of the day, you actually didn't really care that much. You're the voice of reason, Greg. Mm. But then calm, I think it's also... reason. Mm. I think, well, I'm just like, it's one thing to be all cool and like, but you don't want to be just pretending that it didn't get to you. And then you get to the end of the day and you're like, oh oh man, I really didn't like that. Yeah. So it's important, I think, to just ignore it, do your job, but then reflect on it and go, was that actually a big deal? Like, mm." you do have to choose, choose your battles, don't you? And try and figure out, did that really Mm. affect? Mm." And I think word would get around. Mm. about the venue pretty quick if there was yeah. someone doing that at every single wedding like it's getting around now oh it is isn't it yeah oh, is it what is it what if only we had his, uh, the venue's name we could totally like slander them slander slander alright dude I think we've done well oh it's a long wow. one oh, that's what she said whoops uh, alright bro now get what we're going to make snap and it was like get, get your um, fitness on get your fitness on <laughs> Uh, Would you ever do any CrossFit? Uh, I've thought about it. My brother does it, but I oh, don't. Does he? I don't like exercising with other people, apart from Michelle. Your brother's just like overachiever. He's a, he's like he's becoming more alpha as time goes on. It's really mm. quite bit bad. Has he still got his sweet website? The um, oh the the um, vet, vet, veteran. Vet, he sold it. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> he sold the business. Yeah. Did he make any money off it? Uh, yeah, he did. Yeah. I don't know how much, but I know he did. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So someone else is flogging off like, you know. Got, I got it? you six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wow, it's so funny. Like American Eagles with like the United States flag and we fought. Oh, I don't even know what they were. Oh, what was that one? It there was, was a really uh, funny one. Uh, something about. Those classic cliches that, you, uh, you know, you know the one. I don't remember what it was. I might go to the vet store. I, I, st- I, I stood for America I, I stand for freedom, so stand... For, it's something like that, I can't remember. I don't know. That's, I can't find the page now. Are you trying to... Yeah. I'm trying to find it. 
Oh, man. Um, anyway, cool. All right, dude. So um, good, good chat. Cool, man. Uh, yeah, awesome. Uh, hey, let's, uh, let's I look forward to chatting next week, man. Sounds good. Have a good evening, Greg. See you, buddy. See you, bro. Bye. Bye.